from my day word for today. Romans 8. For those who don't know about day words, it's where you go and sit at the end of the year and you get a scripture and a sentence for every day of the next year. So Romans 8 was written in December last year for today. I believe God is wanting, he wants us to be arrested in what he wants to say through Romans 8 today. Amen. Great. Go and read Romans 8, 50, 100 times. And uh, there will be always something new that God will reveal to you. There's a major, major focus on the Holy Spirit in Romans 8. And if today you can walk out here with a desire to see more of him, to respect his presence more, to allow him to work in and through you, let it then be so in Jesus' name. Okay, Zechariah 4, 6, you can write that down. Remember, it says, not by power, nor by might, but by my spirit, says the Lord. Amen. Whatever you're going to do, it must be through the Holy Spirit. When I go into the Word, my brother, my sister, don't go into the Word without the Spirit. It's very dangerous. Get into the Word without the Spirit, and you will see more death in your life. Have a prayer just because you need to pray, and you must pray, but you don't ask the Holy Spirit to guide you. Then you will get into more religion. More religion will bring death in you. So you want to be bound. You want to be enslaved by the flesh about in, in religion and a lot of rubbish. Do the word, do the prayer, sit here, sit in other times that you would hear the word of God and do it without the spirit and you will grow into death and grow into the flesh. Hello, because the word is the sword of the spirit, doesn't belong to me and you. The sword, of the, the sword of the spirit in my hand, that sword is very, 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 very dangerous. Let it always be the sword of the Spirit. You don't touch the sword unless you do it with the Holy Spirit. Amen. Therefore, from verse 1, there is now no condemnation for those who are in, in Christ Jesus. Because through Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit who gives life has set you free from the law of sin and death. There will be a law that will work in you, my brother, my sister. You will be under the control, under the control of the law but the difference will it be the law of the spirit or the law of the flesh in the law of the flesh is what the flesh will dictate to you you don't feel like worshiping so you don't worship because you must be honest with yourself you don't feel like listening you feel like arguing in your in your head with somebody or with yourself you feel like the emotions if it's up or down i must just be honest about it and that's it Honesty is good. You cannot fake. You cannot live a lie. But honesty is just there so that I can come into a place of repentance. So that honesty must lead to truth. Are you with me? When you are being honest, doesn't mean you speak the truth. Because the truth is Christ. There's many people out there using the name of Jesus. I swear word. There's many atheists. There's many people in other different type of freaky religions even. They can be very honest, but they are not in truth. Because truth is a person, Jesus Christ. Amen. So it starts out to say, my brother, my sister, no condemnation. No, the curse of and, and the, the judgment of the religion and the law of sin and death. But that will work in me if I try to do the right thing. If I try to pray, if I try to get into the word, but I'm not doing it with the spirit quite dangerous when I do the flesh and I'm just playing a sinner I will not scream out crucify him but when I do the word and the prayer and a walk with Jesus and I do it without the spirit I will say crucify him crucify is what it was the religious guys that screamed out those words and got everybody to do the same. It was religion to deceive all the rest. To say, let's 
kill, let's destroy whatever is really from Christ in you. Whatever is really from Christ in you, there will be an enemy in you, in your heart, that will cry out death to that. Crucify. You will not hear that voice. But that's the agenda of that thing. That is your enemy. The enemy of God, the enemy of your, of your life could live in you, he will speak to you, he will be there where you are, but you can be there where he is with you every day. Amen. Are you with me? Oh, no, no, don't die. Any result of the rugby that is now falling, you know, 12 o'clock the next day. Ash. Therefore, no condemnation for those who are under a certain law. There's a law for the rugby team. This is the way you will do it. You not catch the ball and there you run out of the whole arena, whatever you want to call it. They will say the stadium, yeah, what the freak is that guy doing? But sometimes we catch a revelation, we catch the thing, and we don't understand what I got was in a team dynamic, always in a team, the body of Christ. When I cut off my thumb, he didn't go and live in Pofada. It rotten died. Okay. That's what they told me. Okay. What am I saying? Whatever revelation you will get, whatever is in a context of team, is in the context of a team, because we are the body of Christ. We are the body of Christ. You will not function without the body. If you understand interdependence, if you understand that you need to be dependent on somebody and somebody need to be dependent on you, you need to submit to someone and only if you are willing to submit to somebody, people must submit to you. Because we need to trust one another. Amen. Okay. Law of sin and death. And the law of freedom and life. For what the law is, was powerless to do, because it was weakened by the flesh. God did not did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh to be a sin offering. And so he condemned sin in the flesh. He doesn't want to condemn you. But he wants you to deal with the sin. In order that the righteous requirement of the law might be fully met. In us who do not live according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. It's not like we can do the right everything. We, can, we cannot have the right performance. But if we walk in the spirit... The yoke can be easy, the burden can be light. You are here? You are still here? Those who live according to the flesh have their minds set on what the flesh desires. But those who live in accordance with the spirit have their minds set on what the spirit desires. The mind governed by the flesh is death. Your mind will be governed. Something will rule your mind. The question will be, is it the flesh or the spirit? But your mind will be ruled. The biggest deception and the foolish joke would be, nobody is ruling my mind and my thoughts. <laughs> it's either your flesh and the devil, or it's the Holy Spirit and the word. Governed by the flesh is death, but the mind governed by the spirit is life and peace. The mind governed by the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law, nor can it do so. Hostile to God, in different translations, talking about it is the enemy of God. So you have the thoughts of the enemy of God in you through your flesh. Your flesh is not gone. Unfortunately not. But you can decide who will have the final say. When I walk in the spirit, my brother and my sister, that's when I have the thoughts of the spirit. Because the new covenant, it says, this is a new covenant that I will have with you in the last days. I will write my laws, my thought patterns, I will put it into your heart. You will think the way I think in your heart. And I will write it in your mind. You will Think with your mind the way I think. You will feel in your heart the way I feel. That's the new covenant. God wants you to the way to think the way He thinks. He wants your heart to carry what He 
is carrying in his heart. And that is calling the new covenant. And then he says, I will not think upon your sins, about the iniquity, about this, that what he was wrong in your life. My thoughts are with what I dreamt about for your life, about your future, about what we will do together as we are covenanted together. Your father wants you to think the way he thinks. He wants you to have his heart. That is his desire. But how will I get there? I must get into the word, but not without the spirit. Because that's, a, that's the letter will kill. Don't touch the word of God without the spirit. But you will be controlled. That's your choice. You will be controlled by your flesh or by the spirit. Are you with me? You are still here. You find some guys, you know, when there's uh, the rugby or the this or that, they are focused. Their eyes are there. You find when we talk about the word, they're gone. They will not even look at you. It's just flesh. It's like something manifest over them. Now, everybody looking down, don't suddenly look up. <laughs> you know, you can see who is led by the Spirit, who is full of the Spirit. That when you open the word, their face lit up. And then when you talk about the word, you find others there. They're getting like this. And these days, he's going like this into a cell phone. But, but most probably they are busy with a word on the cell phone. You know? Most probably. Yes. Really, my brother, my sister, you can look at yourself. No. In a mirror. But how can you do that while looking in the, in the word? But okay. But think of yourself if when you get into the word, you're supposed to become more alive. When you pray, you're supposed to come more alive. When you have the worship music, you're supposed to come more alive. Well, you'll find, when I must hear the word or get into the word, I'm getting a... I'm not talking go into the rest of the Lord. I'm talking getting flat tires. You've learned how to deal with your relationship with God in the flesh. You have a fleshly relationship in performance through religion with God now that is just there because the enemy of God is with you the vijand van God is met you that's it until the day you die because you will have flesh you will not be perfect like Jesus was on earth but the whole thing is what are you doing with it so in you there's this magnet let me say like a magnet that is drawing you and this Easter, this iron in you is being drawn to that. There is just this on trackings power. What is on trackings kracht? Power of attraction. That can work. The power of attraction, yes. I, I'm attracted to, I'm attracted to the word of God. I'm attracted to his presence. I'm attracted to what he has for me. And even in that sense, I need to be attracted to Father dealing with me as a son by giving me discipline through the word, through circumstances, through brothers and sisters, through a leader. I am supposed to be attracted to that. But there's an attraction in the flesh also. There's a pulling into that direction, like a magnet that is being pulled. And that Pulling will be there in your life till you die. Bottom line. That's why the, the flesh against the spirit. The spirit against the flesh. The whole time it says. You with me? Oh, tell your neighbor, are you awake? Verse 9. You, you, however, are not in the realm of the flesh, but you are in the realm of the spirit, if indeed the spirit of God lives in you. So what are we talking about? While there's a pulling pulling into the flesh and there's a pulling to walk in the spirit because i walk in the spirit then i'm not walking there. if i'm in the flesh i cannot be in the spirit because the one is an enemy an opposite of the other one now how will i get into this place 
The more I allow myself through prayer and the word that I move into the realm of the spirit, to walk in the spirit, to think in the spirit, to be with the spirit, for the spirit to, to have his place of honor in my life as the temple of the spirit. The more I come into this place, the less the pulling into that place. Because there's now this major attraction into his word, into his presence, into that what is right, into that what is beautiful, into a beautiful life, believing people in the sense of that God has excellent plan for their lives. How can I love or like that guy? I don't have to like him, I must love him in the name of the Lord. Hello? Are you still here? But I must then deal with the flesh. But I come, don't come and stand here and fight the flesh. Not by power, not by might, but by my spirit. You'll receive power when you do it. No, you'll receive power when the Holy Spirit will come upon you. And then you'll be my witnesses. Yeah, you can. Because I'm supposed to be a witness. I must speak to people about Jesus Christ. I can speak the religion. I can speak the law. And they will hear why they're going to hell. And they just feel condemned. Or I can be led by the Spirit. And the Holy Spirit gives to me from the depth of a richness, the richness of the trillions pieces of gold that I could give a person. And Holy Spirit will pick out that one out of a trillion pieces of gold that you must come and give to that person. How on earth will you know how, what you want to give? Somebody tells you, there's a trillion stones there's a specific stone that i have today for that other person yes i will give it to him nobody will be so stupid to say that you mean i say what one must i give and the holy spirit will be there god will say that one but you will not have to look you will just have to see where where he is looking at you must look at his eyes and see where he is looking at. Are you with me? Otherwise you're going to look at your life. You're going to look at the world. You're going to look at all the chaos out there. Gaza, Israel, Ukraine, whatever. Millions dying from starvation in Africa and different places. So many things shaken. And you cannot understand what is happening. All that can make sense is looking at God. And being attracted to his word and to him and who he is and say, my life is with him. In this world, you will have trouble, but I've overcome the world. Jesus said, are you? Are you with me? The more I get into this place, the less the attraction, the, the less the pull into the flesh, pull into fear, pull into anxiety, the pull into stress, the pull into rejection, the pull into what if I'm wrong, the pull into I need to justify myself, I have this fight with people, I have this fight with, the, with this guy or that guy. You have the peace of God and you're walking in the spirit if... You can think of everybody that irritated you, that you wanted to destroy or kill in the, your past. I know, yeah, just think about it. not one of you guys, but other people. You know, you think about that and you're okay with everybody. You don't have this love relationship with everybody. And I'm not talking about that. But you are free. You are free. You are free to love them. You are free to pray for them. You are free to have God's thoughts about that guy. God's heart for that guy. Because the love is patient, kind, does not do, does not that, does not that, does not that. But at the end of the day, he rejoices with the truth. What is the truth? That man, I want to slaughter him. Maybe. I just in prayer. I want to slaughter him. But if the love works in me, and I have God's heart more and more in my, here and God's mind, his thoughts. I can rejoice in the truth that God does not, did not just forgive him. God has an excellent plan with his life. God wants to provide for him. Whatever he is thinking, far more what he thinks or pray, God wants to give unto him. If I'm in the spirit. And not in the flesh. But deal with people in the flesh. Have your entertainment in the flesh. But the problem is, when you're not in the spirit and in the flesh, or well, the enemy, it smells like what? Pizza 
or curry chicken or I don't know what. <sighs> the demons like to eat. I cannot say eat you. Eat um, your flesh. So I, I don't know how to say that. But it's their food. It's their food. Caleb and Joshua said, those giants, they are food. They were not cannibals. But they talked that we're going to grow through this situation by facing the, the giants. Oh, it's going to be like having food. Facing your giants, facing your intimidation, facing the things that stand between you and the promises of God. When you face that, you're going to grow. And you, if you're walking in the spirit, if you're walking with God, with the fear of God on your life, you'll say, that's my food. I'm going to grow through it. That's why James can say, can, could say, count it all joy when you fall into various trials. Count it all joy. Oh, I have a, such a lot of joy today because I have a lot of trials. Ha! Huh. Okay. Are, are you with me? Yo, I will walk in the spirit, not in the flesh, in what I see. We must speak to those guys with the rugby. Nine o'clock or eight o'clock. What's the difference? Sleeping in church or not sleeping in church? Okay. Where are we? But if Christ is in you, then even though your body is subject to death because of sin, the spirit gives life because of the righteousness, your, your stature in Christ. And if the spirit of him who raised Christ from the dead is living in you, how much more, how much more will he who raised Christ from the dead give life to your mortal bodies? Because of, why? Because of his spirit who lives in you. So God is saying, it's not just to walk in the spirit. There's a pull from the spirit into the beauty of God, into the word, into a walk with him that can be excellent. And there's a pull into the flesh for distraction, for you to be deceived, even to walk in religion, but have a Hamors of a life. It's not just that. When you're here. But he says my brother and sister. You have the victory already. Because that pulling. Into that what is excellent. Is already in you. The Holy Spirit is already in you. And if he raised Christ from the dead. The spirit that is in you. How much more. How much more your mortal bodies. What is it about raising your mortal bodies and the death that is in you to bring it to life? <sighs> you are still here. Therefore, brothers and sisters, we have an obligation. Obligation. Everybody say obligation. obligation. Okay, that means you have no choice. But it is not to the flesh to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if you live by the Spirit, you put to death the misdeeds of the body. You will live. I'll put to death all the rubbish. How will you do it? You must position through the cross of Christ. I've died in Christ. You cannot die. This flesh cannot die except through the cross of Christ. Where I'm crucified with Christ. You get guys out there in the world. They can make quality decisions. And they can make good decisions to humble themselves. And they don't live for themselves. They live for others. They're giving their life for others. That could be very beautiful. Better than millions of Christians. Most probably some of them. But the sacrifice of their lives. The, the giving up of their lives cannot produce an eternal life. Because only if you have died with Christ, you will be raised with Christ. Amen. Amen. So only when you've, when you died with Christ, you've been crucified with Christ, died with Christ, buried with Christ, raised with Christ, seated with Christ in heavenly places. Then you can alive, have a life of excellence where life is Christ and die is gain. May it be so. May it be so. That is what the spirit wants to do. But there's a pull in the flesh, a pull. A pull into fear, a pull into love that will drive out all fear. A pull into anxiety and stress and, and a pull of the peace of God that transcends all understanding. There's a, I'm down and out and I'm fed up and I, I'm 
Ek is moe gewerk. Give me that in English, I am. No, that doesn't sound so. <coughs> okay, moe gewerk. Okay, but there's the joy of the Lord that is my strength. There's a pull of the joy of the Lord that's my strength. I don't want to have joy. That's going to be fake. Okay, your emotion of joy is gone. You feel out. But you have in you not your emotion, God's emotion, the joy of the Lord. Oh, the devil has stolen my joy. Okay, whatever. That's your emotion that he stole. But he cannot steal from you the joy of the Lord. How? Will God's joy be stolen from him? <laughs> it's impossible. So if God is in you, his excitement about your life will never leave you. And his excitement about your life is your strength. The fact that in spite of everything, God is excited about my life. How on earth can that be? Are you here? When they go with a rugby ball and they go close and they could... Dry a tree, they could. Uh, yeah, that one. When they could do that, they say, I choose to stand up and be excited and to cheer them on that. And that's then what you choose. Rubbish, man. <laughs> it's just part of you. You get excited. Not true? If you know something of rugby or not. You can get excited. Now with God, it's in him. And when he knows that there's breakthroughs for you, and he's excited about the fact that tomorrow you can have that breakthrough. Now, while you hear the word of God, now you can have the breakthrough. If you just choose to apply the word and put it in. That word, with the word of God, under the guidance of the spirit, sword of the spirit, you will have victory. You will have breakthrough. God is excited about the now that you can have breakthrough, about the now that you can go into that what he has for your life. But the enemy is also there and he could stress just there where you are now while you're hearing the word. Enemy is stressed when you hear the word under the guidance of the spirit. When you can see through the spirit, the enemy is stressed, yeah. Because you're going to walk away from him. You're going to wake, walk away from your anxiety. You're going to walk away from all your thought patterns and your reasoning and your opinions. And your, you're going to walk away from it. And he, he cannot allow that. But you choose. The word with the spirit or the word in the flesh that will attract other demons to confirm to you why that will not work for you. But the first way to get you away from the word is to Leave you with the word, but without the spirit. Because the word without the spirit is the devil even tempting Jesus. So the devil can use this word anytime. If you're not going to go with the spirit to the word, you will go with the devil to the word. But you will either go with the spirit or the devil to the word. There's no middle way. So many times when you get into the word, get into reading the Bible, just say, Holy Spirit, make it life. Make it life. Let it live in me. Let the word of God dwell richly in you. The word is alive in you. Only through the spirit. Are you with me? Okay. You have this obligation. You put to death. You put to death in the name of Jesus through the spirit of God. For those, verse 14, for those who are led by the Spirit of God, they are the children of God. What is uh, the theme in the English on your pamphlet? What does it say? Sonship through the Spirit. Sonship is stature only through the Spirit. Stature only through the Spirit. Devil can, you can know all the word, all the word. And you can be a very excellent devil. Or you can be a very excellent person in a very excellent relationship with the enemy of God. By knowing the word in the flesh, but knowing the word with the spirit, you grow up to be a son of God. Remember, 
child of God, you're a child of God, but what will you do? What will you become? As a child of God, I will not become an engineer. No, as a child of God, I will grow up and become a son of God in, in, in the son of God. I will become the bride of Christ towards the son of God. Hello? But to my father, as a child is my needs. And I, uh, being child, not childish, being child means I position myself to be dependent. Dependent on an excellent, good, good, good father. But then I must grow up so that it will not be about myself. That more and more my prayer will be the heart of the Father for the nations. The heart of the Father for Bluefontein, my brother, my sister, my enemy, my, the one that I want to destroy. Not one of us, but are you with me? The one that I wanted to destroy is the one that I have an issue with. That I will just put the judgment. He's like that, and he's like that, and he's like that. He's the guy that you want to destroy him. And may God's blood and name be stand between you and that person so that that person is protected against you and your opinions about that person, about that Christian. Because you and the enemy have a good relationship. The enemy, his enemy, no. The enemy of God. Because the enemy of God is walking with your flesh. He's walking with your flesh. But you decide. That you will walk in the spirit or you will walk in the flesh. If you are led by the spirit of God, that doesn't mean, you know, when I am even here, let me say, we are hearing something. Yes, it makes sense. Or you have your time with God. Yes. You, you are at a time of prayer and you hear what God is saying. Yeah, and you got this revelation. Excellent. But still you can be totally childish. Because child of God, you will become childish or you will grow up. You will become mature or immature. There's no nothing. There's not I'm child and tomorrow I'm child and then I'm child and then I'm child and then I'm child. There's an attitude of a child to be dependent on him. But I will become childish or mature. Mature because it's less of me, more of him. Childish because I have this thing and I... This needs to be dealt with, and it's me, 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 me. You need to deal with the things in your life. I need to deal with the things in my life. <sighs> but the more it's going to become about me, the more childish I'm going to become. Childish is when it's, when it's freaky all about me. When it's, I don't know what's the right words. But it's, when it's really about me and what I feel. And my emotion determine what I think about that guy. My emotion of being disappointed in him determines what I feel about him. Not God. Nothing. Nothing with whatever God's, thought, God's thoughts about him. God's heart for him. Nothing about that. It's me in my tantrum. To have my own thoughts about him. My emotions about her. That's me in my immature, childish way of thinking. But when I grow up, what is my father's heart for her? Love is patience, love is kind. Oh, and we try to figure that out all the time. Patient, 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 patient. But if I grow and become patient, I can be kind. I will not boast. I will not. I will not be jealous. I will not, I will not. So that at the end of the day, cherry on the cake, I will rejoice in the truth. The love will rejoice in the truth. Rejoice in what truth? The truth of Father's will over your life. The truth of Father desiring more of you. Father saying you are precious. Father that has an excellent dream for your life. Father that wants to provide for you. And that you are going to get something that I prayed for for 20 years. And you just prayed a few months and then you got it. And I'm much more holy than you. And then you got it. <laughs> Anybody went, uh, were there or know about people where life is not fair? But Father God is forming the gold in you so that you will start to think more like he thinks. So he will organize that this Johan, you know, he will get something that I'm not getting. But, but he, this other day was not like a cheeky geweest. Not anymore at all. But... And then he got this, he just prayed for this and he got it. And what about me? But God is using that situation to form in me that my thoughts in my heart will become more and more like his thoughts. Because 
he's using that for me to grow up, to become a son of God, to have the same heart that he has for you on. To think the same thoughts that he is thinking about you on. So all things God will use for the good. Ah, it's further in Romans 8. We will not get to there maybe. Everything will work for the good for those who love God. If I'm led by the Spirit. If I am led by the Spirit. Get a hunger for His Spirit. Amen. And His presence. For those who are led by the Spirit, those are the sons of God. The Spirit you received, you received. Does not make you slaves so that you will live in fear again. Rather, the Spirit you received brought about your adoption to sonship. And by Him we cry, Abba, Father. So he says, it's not just the pulling into the spirit and the pulling into the flesh. No. You have the spirit in you. And if the spirit is in you, you will overcome. Because you have the victory already in you. So you are already in this place actually. But secondly also, you already have the identity of an overcomer. Later on, we are more than conquerors. But you have the identity of, of, as an overcomer because you know your identity as a child of God. And the spirit, once again, the spirit, when you're in the, in the spirit and walk in the spirit, you will hear the voice of your identity. Voice of your identity. Because the spirit will testify in your spirit and with your spirit that you're a child of God. There will be a testimony about your sonship. There will be a testimony from Holy Spirit. His voice will become clearer, clearer, clearer. That voice will become less, less, less. You know, remember when we did this illustration the other time? So when the enemy speaks to you, you are not good enough because that, and, and you start to walk to the word, but you have, don't have a cooking clue what the word is saying, and you don't understand it, because the word is like, you can hear the word, but the word is like that. And it is, but you are worth nothing, and you are hungry now, Tell the pastor in your heart, how can you just now finish? You know, I've seen that in eyes. And, and you can hear that clearly. And then you are in the spirit. And, and you are. And you hear those words. Food, the food, in there, the pizza is waiting. And the food smells good. Yeah. And you feel, Lord, let the pastor carry on for another hour. And, and, uh, nobody heard that voice before. <laughs> okay 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 but you hear what the spirit is saying and when you hear what the spirit is saying the the flesh becomes you cannot hear the temptation from hell and from the flesh anymore so much let it be so move to walk in the spirit amen spirit testify with your spirit children of god okay and that we are heirs and co-heirs. So this has to do a lot with Holy Spirit. There's a pulling, there's a pulling, there's an identity in Christ. It's God in you, and you can have the breakthrough. Yes, but then further he's saying, this present suffering and the future glory, uh, we are talking about the next 10 verses. I'm not going to go through it uh, in detail. That is another two Sundays. But summary-wise, Paul says, I consider... I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. For the creation waits, waits with eager expectation for the children of God to be revealed. But in your waiting, in your waiting, just be frustrated to dump it all, to quit, to quit, to quit. Some people wait because they've they quit. They wait for the circumstances to change. Instead of waiting in God and on God. Are you with me? So what are we talking about? Creation is subject to frustration. Frustration. Oh, anybody know that word? Mm. Anybody said that? Anybody experienced that? Very much, very much, very intensely. And you know, frustration... One can be from the devil to say, quit. Just blow your top. Uh, walk away. Fall into the rubbish with that frustration of the temptation. But there's a frustration that must lead to a birthing. And he says, creation 
is not frustrated with a temptation, with a temptation. No, creation out there is subjected to frustration because creation is waiting the revelation, the revealing of the sons of God. Creation is waiting in frustration for me and you to grow up and become mature. So that sons of God, the mature children of God will be revealed that will liberate creation. Because creation says it's all about God. The creation declare the glory of our God. But the team leaders, the crown of creation, me and you, we're not in line just to declare the glory of God. But when we grow up, it's more and more about declaring Him, declaring His glory. And when we come in line with what creation was made for, the heavens declare the greatness and the beauty of our God. And we can, when we can fall in line, get over ourselves. We are revealed as sons of God to liberate creation with the frustration between flesh and spirit. Flesh and spirit. That turmoil between creation and our flesh. Creation and our flesh. Creation and our immaturity. is about me. Me, 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 me. Less about me, more about him. <sighs> Creation liberated because me and you, we grew up and we're okay to spend that extra time with the word. I told you that, that, that one time, uh, Zephaniah 3.17, one of the core verses in uh, Kriari, where I said, God, speak to me about creativity. Speak to me about um, this art school. And God gave me Zephaniah 3.17. Look it up. Lord your God is with you, mighty to save, take great delight in you, quiet you in his love, rejoice over you with singing. And some of the translation, even like as if one dancing. God in the arts, God singing about me. That through the arts we must let the people hear what he is singing over them. Hello? That became like, wow, Lord, excellent. And then God said, meditate on that verse for the rest of the day. And I had to say that verse over and over and over and over for a whole day. I freaked out my flesh. I was later so frustrated. I was so irritated. <laughs> like very little in my life. Because if you frustrate me, I can think a lot of thoughts about how rubbish you are or how wrong you are and I'm right and then I don't feel so frustrated because I've won the court case in my head or in my mind with you and the frustration is gone I don't have a court case with a word I'm just saying frustrated with you but when my flesh is frustrated with a word and you take the word in the spirit Aye! your flesh can try it man I told the church a hundred times try it just take a verse and Say that verse over and over for three hours. Let, come and tell me what happened. The one verse, over and over and over. But through that day, later it started to explode in me. That I can, could take it. That I could sit and hear God saying, Can you hear me singing over you? Where I had to... As if God would sing, what, what will my father sing over me? And then he would stop me with the thing of, my son, hear my voice. And no, that is a command. That's not what I'm singing over you. What is my, just my opinion, my love for you, my passion for you? And every second verse, I get a sentence, I get into a command of to do something. God had to set me free from the doing in the office, having a relationship with God in the office of what is good, what is not good. What am I doing right, what am I doing wrong? Not fearing in the wrong way, but just to be with the Father and to relate with Him in relationship, not to re relate to do. Are you with me? From the overflow of a relationship, there's the calling for out there. Um, are we still here? So what are we saying? When you're in this place, you are in the flesh. 
I don't know if some of you have seen that. Like that day when I had to get into the Word. Oh man, the frustration came. But the frustration was there for a purpose. That enemy hope, I will quit. Enemy hope, you will quit when you feel frustrated. God believes in you that you will carry it through in prayer so that there will be a birthing like a nine months birthing, hopefully not elephant birthing. How much? That's two and a half years or something like that. Hey? Hmm. But a birthing to be seen, that one is from God. Because you grew up in prayer. If you want to continue in prayer, ha, you will see. That's somebody that had to start to grow up. And God is revealed, creation is liberated, your circumstances fall in line, submit to the purposes of God in your life. Finance, you not work for money, money must work for you in the purposes of God. Whatever you're going through, it can work for the good. Because all things are God's servants for the purposes of God in your life. If you walk in the spirit, if you have that attitude, if you grow up and not become childish, but sons of the living God. Are you still here? Are you still here? May God help you. May God help me that we will get into the word. Ah, quite a few weeks that I had to go and have time with God. And the first, first day, you know, in the beginning, only with me, not with you, maybe. It's nice and it's good and it's great. And then you have the revelation. And that, now, we need to get practical because I'm a very practical person. You, you, one of you could maybe say about yourself. Okay, then you go and have a relationship with you. Just ask God to leave. But if God is there and he decides on the table what is now, that you will read through Isaiah. That the one time I had to read through Isaiah. And go back to certain passages. Huh, for the whole week. I need to say it's every time. But the frustration that can come. And then to bring your focus back into the word. Bring your focus back into the word. Then allow the Holy Spirit to do that birthing. Because that frustration in you, when you say, I'm going to spend time with the Word. I'm going to have a day or two in God's presence before next year. I want to hear God. Am I on the same page with you? Have, do I have your thoughts about next year? Do I have your heart for next year? And about family, about this, about finances, about that. Make uh, ten points and get five scriptures about each one. And get into the Word about it. Go and do that. Is he not here? Is he not here? Okay. So when, when you say you want to do that, I'm going to speak to people about Jesus. I'm going to speak to people about Christ. I'm going to tell them, Father is excited about you. And you will have an appointment with God. You know? You remember that one that I said to, to the best of both? Like Grant said, colored guys, they are the best of both. And I said to that one colored guy, God has an appointment with you. They're in the midst. Come on, we can eat story. One, two, three, four, five. And I walked there, and I, because I was just, I was frustrated. I must do it maybe someday. Now. Not now, in this time. So I just went to the city and said, I'm going to tell 20 people that God, they have an appointment with God. Because they have. Either now or afterwards. Hopefully not then, because then he's going to hell. But now, then you can receive him amen so i would tell the guy you have an appointment with god and i just carry on oh man i was so excited it, it just stirred something in me but the one guy turned around and said hey <laughs> screaming at me and uh, all i'm saying is my brother so i had a wonderful time but if you say i'm gonna really pr reach out I'm going to get into the way. I'm going to get in prayer. I'm... Many times he's not just, ah, and he's flowing and everything going and he's good. In some way, oh, something is happening. Because the enemy says, you need to quit. This major passion thing is not working. And you feel, I tried and I tried and it doesn't really work. It didn't really work. How many of you had some very good ideas but then you must understand there's a process of this sighing this this frustration in here you must carry it with a word in prayer by faith 
and faithfulness through until there's a birthing. To be set free from the devil is like this. In the name of Jesus, go. And the devil can go. Psh. Now you are free. Huh. You are free. But if you do nothing, seven others, more haha demons will come back and come and live in you. Now the thing is, will you allow the process of frustration so that you will not become childish, but that you will now grow up to get out of the place of the flesh where the devil had the place. Now that you said to the devil, devil, what's foot sack in English? I don't know. But it's a very aggressive form of go away. Okay. Now you told the devil to go, but you are here still in the flesh. Allowing that frustration in creation, frustration because we are frustrated with creation. But it's you that need to move. Creation is frustrated not at his own choice. Man out of his own choice. Creation is waiting for you to grow up. Bloemfontein is waiting for the children of God to become mature. To live their childish ways. And to grow up where it will be all about Christ. And nothing about them. And the heavens will open up. And Bloemfontein will never, never, never be the same. But Bluefield is waiting for you and me, for the churches. So in that thing, you grow, let it grow. Let your house become full of the presence and the glory and the respect and the fear of God. So that when the enemy come back, it says, this house is not empty. What happened here? It's full of God's beauty, full of God's respect, full of the fear of God, full of integrity, full of the character of God, full of a love for God that is compelling them, driving them. They need to leave. <laughs> that place cannot be my home anymore. Because that guy grew up. <laughs> Are you with me? May God help you. This is all about the spirit. And it's all about and it's only through the spirit that this can happen. Okay, that's all of that. I'm, uh, and even in all of this, he says, verse 22. Not only so, but we ourselves, we groan inwardly. As we wait for the, that adoption to happen. And then he's talking about hope. Hope will carry you through. Sorry, I'm running. Verse 26. In the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. What is Paul saying? This process is not just going to happen. Guys, you're going to feel weak. If you will allow this. And allow this to happen. Like a wife that is pregnant, it's not like she just wants Kentucky. I mean, she's going through frustration also. Any wife confirm? Oh. If you allow this process, it says, sometimes you're going to feel weak. Finish. But when you feel weak, but when you feel weak, the spirit will be there. The spirit will be there to help you in your weakness. He says it. Why? Because it's going to be a given. You will feel weak sometimes. You will experience weakness. But the Spirit is there. He will help us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray. You don't know what to do. You don't have a solution. But the Spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. Praying in tongues. Praying in the Spirit. Oh, excellently, excellently, excellently important. Build yourself up in the spirit. Jude 20, hey? Make sure that you're in here. Yeah, the voice in your spirit is becoming louder, 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 louder. Because if your spirit is more awake, if I can say like that. If your spirit is more awake, it's awake to hear what Holy Spirit is testifying in your spirit. Hello? And you grow up, and you grow up, but the Spirit will help you in your weakness. When you feel, I don't want to, I don't want to, I'm fed up, I'm tired, I want to go and sleep, but this, 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 it's a Sunday, what is he carrying on? Where well, you say, just start to pray in tongues. Don't move your lips because I kind of know, I'm going to know it's you. Okay, but just in your mind, start to pray in tongues. Get yourself in line, get yourself in line, build yourself up in your spirit. God will help you in your weakness. At the end of a preaching. Help you in your weakness when you feel, I've tried, I've tried, I've tried, doesn't work. Be afraid of your flesh. Because the enemy of God will come and live there. The enemy of God will make his home with you. 
He will make his home with you. Well, Father, Son, Holy Spirit wants to make his home with you if you respect him because he will not come and live in wara, wara, wara. You need to respect him. In the fear of God, you will get into his word with the Holy Spirit. And when you are weak, you'll be honest, but you will ask the Holy Spirit to guide you and you start to pray in tongues. And God will be there. There's 300 testimonies um, in my life about starting to pray in the Spirit and suddenly I just know what to do. Or suddenly it just happened and there's just a miracle. Please, let somebody pray for you for the releasing of the gifts, especially praying in tongues. Okay? Are you here? You can start to pray that the pastor finishes. Okay. If it's in the will of God. Okay. He himself intercedes for us. So the Holy Spirit intercedes for us. Then, he carries on. And we know that in all things God works for good. For those who love him, those who have been called according to his purpose. We talked about that already. That everything can come in line and be servants of God's purpose in your life and through your life. Then he says more than conquerors. Where? Verse 31. Romans 8 verse 31. What then shall we say in response to all these things? If we've spoken about these hundred things, Paul, that he spoke about with such a lot of depth and such a lot of things that you can take for another year. What shall we then say? If God is for us, who can be against us? If God is for us, who can be against us? Let's sum it up. So if you are in the spirit, he says, if you are in the spirit, and you know God is for you, you are so far from the enemy of God. How can the enemy be against you if you are in Christ? Because you already lost against God. And you are in the winner. You are in the conqueror. That's why later he says, you are more than conquerors. More than conquerors. Because if God is for you and you are in the one who conquered. When the devil wants to fight you, he must look at his own defeat. When you are in Christ, Christ reminds him of his defeat. I'm a loser. I've lost. And that lady, that guy is in Christ. He's, he's in the one that has declared 100% my defeat. Are you with me? How can the, how can the enemy be against you? He, he has no chance when you are with Christ and when God is for you. I mean, he that, if God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all. How will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? Oh, we pray for all things. We have the promises of God. We pray for this breakthrough. Pray for that. Pray for that. You stand in faith. Um, if you have faith, you will move the mountain. And you stand with the promises of God. But ah, 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 ah. First of all, walk in the Spirit. Secondly, understand then, in this place, if God is for you, nothing can come against you. Whatever come against you will be an opportunity to give him honor. Whatever will come against you will be an opportunity to give him honor. Not the opportunity for you to have the luxury things necessarily. But what come against you will be an opportunity to give him the honor. For him to be glorified. If God is for you, nothing. Who can be against you? Why? Because if God gave him. In Christ he has given you everything. In Christ, he has given you everything. And if you make Christ the center point of your provision, center point of everything, he will give the rest also. If he has given you everything in Christ, how can you doubt that he will give the rest? But the rest is not first of all important. What is important is that you find yourself in Christ. And the rest is not always money and this and this and this. The rest is I want answers for the things in my life. I want answers. And like that one atheist said that I led to the Lord and the demons went out of him and a lot of stuff happened. And later he came to me and he argued with me about why there's no God for hours and hours and hours. And later came to me and he said, I still have those questions. But it's not important anymore because I found a love. I found a reality in Christ that is so intense that, that those questions doesn't matter anymore. This was atheist, where all the other atheists abided in his words. All right, we're going for landing. I see your excitement. Guys, no. 
En dit my nog intimideer. Ok. Jesus Christ, yes, gave us everything, but how he was given, died, raised at the right hand of the Father, where he is also interceding for us at the right hand of the Father. Hello. We have the Father. In the same chapter, Jesus interceding in heaven for us. And we have the Holy Spirit on earth interceding through us, for us, through me, even in prayer. That's what we said last week. When you allow, when you start to pray in tongues, and you say, God, help me. Let it be intercession for those babies, oh, those kids under the rubble that could have a, a, a death in the next two weeks laying under the rubble. God, use my, use my tongue as an intercession. intercession. That because when you see and deceive, hello, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, not confused with all respect, all in line. So the intercession from Jesus to the Father for the guys in Gaza and Israel. When you are led by the Spirit, what you pray in intercession for the Middle East is what the Holy Spirit is praying. It's what Jesus is saying to the Father as intercession for the Middle East. What about the honor of interceding for the Middle East? The words that Jesus is saying to the Father. Because Holy Spirit will not pray something else than what Jesus is praying. He will only speak the words of Christ and explain the words of Christ. He will not speak from himself, the word says. Amen. What about being involved in God's team, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? What about being involved, involved in his agenda? Give yourself for that. Amen. And the last concept that he says... What can separate us? What can separate us from the love of God? What can separate us from the love of God? Nothing can separate you from the love of God. Why? The high five? Remember the high five? Huh. Nobody remember the high five in the Bible? Okay. You remember the tring, tring, tring? Oh, this is all German church lessons. Tring, tring, tring. Jeremiah 33, 3. Call upon me and I will show you great and un unmeasurable things. Was jy nooit in die kinderkerk nie? Skaam vir julle. And your four by four, rejoice in the Lord always, and again I will rejoice, that's your four by four, hey? That's through anything. And then your high five, Romans five five. Everybody say Romans five five. Now that is before Romans eight. Romans five five, it says, the love of Christ is being poured in your heart through the Holy Spirit. This whole chapter. Focus on the Holy Spirit and his dealings and his workings in and with you. And what, how you need to respond and how you need to work with the Holy Spirit. How you need to allow him. And at the end of the day, as long as you always remember, the Holy Spirit has poured the love of the Father in you. And 2 Corinthians 5, the love of God compels you. The love of God drives you. There's a driving force. There's a compelling in you. There's a fire shut up in your bones. Not be quiet, shut up, it's contained, a fire in you, and that is through the Holy Spirit, and it's called the love of God inside of you, that's burning like a fire, for your life, and for others around you, let it be so in Jesus' name, thank you Father, for who you are, oh God, I pray that you will speak to every man, woman in this place through your spirit, I pray that you will help us for where we've grieved you, where we've ignored you, Forgive us for that, Lord. Help us to respect your presence in our lives. God, I pray that every man, woman in this place, that they will be revived as right now they choose to give you center stage. As right now they choose not to ignore the Holy Spirit and his voice. Come and surprise them, Holy Spirit, in how you will open up the word, and how you will open up the guidance in the heart of the Father for each one here as they yield through your grace, as they yield to you and that what you have to say God in, in the process of groaning in the process of frustration help every man woman through your grace here yeah, that they will walk with you and see see the salvation of our God see the liberation of creation so that your beauty will be revealed 
through the maturity of the Christ, church of Christ, through the maturity in that what you're going to raise, raise in each one of us. Come and do that. Forgive our immaturity. Forgive our childish ways, Lord. But help us to focus on you and not on ourselves so that we will see your kingdom come. You will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Amen and amen.